that, I want to ask you a question. Do you think artwork is only done on flat paper or flat canvases? Do you think artwork is always just two dimensional? Or can artwork be something three dimensional? Can it be something like this that has form? It has like all the, you can look at it from all the different sides. Is this flat? No. Can that be artwork? Yes. If you carved something like this out of wood, wouldn't that be artistic? This is called a sculpture. Sculpture is another way of doing art. And we are going to spend our next couple weeks talking about different kinds of sculptures. And so I want you to think about the idea that a sculpture is not flat. It's not something you draw on a piece of paper. It's something that you can see from all the different sides. It's something that takes up space. It's long and it's wide and it has depth. So it could be something carved out of something or it could be something created out of different materials. So we are going to look at some different sculptures and the artist we're gonna focus on first. His name was Alexander Calder. until Sandy Calder's time, sculpture was an expression of solidity, of motion by its nest. It turns out that something else was possible. The flight of a bird was possible, or the seeming flight of the bird. And it said, we are ourselves then uh, more than earthbound. shatters the illusion of everything that sculpture ever was. It is unlike any body of work created this century. He changed the nature of sculpture. He redefined what sculpture was, could possibly be, and now is. Alexander Calder. Alexander Calder was born to portrait artist Nanette and sculptor Sterling Calder on July 22, 1898 in Pennsylvania. A third generation artist, Calder grew up with high expectations of what he may bring to the art world.
Calder tried all sorts of jobs before making his big break as an artist. He was a hydraulic engineer, a draftsman, he was a boat mechanic, a timekeeper. Calder met his future wife, Louisa James, on a boat from Paris to New York and they married in 1931 before settling in Roxbury, Connecticut. There's a picture. Calder's first noteworthy work came in the form of Cirque Calder, a series of sculptures made from wire, string, and other materials. Calder's wire sculptures evolved into kinetic structures in which he used his engineering abilities to balance different hanging shapes. The famous artist Marcel Duchamp dubbed these mobiles. Here are some of his famous mobiles. Calder's monumental pieces of work are immortalized in public spaces all around the world. With the assistance of boiler makers, he carefully overviewed the construction of these grand designs. Whoa, those are big. Alexander Calder is remembered through the Calder Prize an award that reflects the contribution that Calder himself made to the art world. All right, scholars, let's take a look at this work of art by Alexander Calder. Now, this is one of his mobiles, one of his sculptures that hangs from the ceiling and moves with the slightest breeze. It's made out of wire, and it also has some aluminum, like the sheet metal and paint. So I want you to notice a couple things. First of all, if you know what a lobster is, the lobster is found somewhere on this picture. What part do you think represents the lobster? What color is a lobster? Lobsters are red, so that gives you a clue that this part right up here represents the lobster. Now the title of the work is Lobster Trap and Fishtail. So where do you think the lobster trap is? Which part is the trap? If you thought maybe this part with all the wires, it looks a little bit like a cage, that's correct. So this is the lobster, this is the lobster trap, and these are the fish tails. They kind of look like fish tails, don't they? Now look at this part here and over here. These are actually shadows. And if we were standing in the New York Museum where this is hanging, we would see those shadows moving around the room because when the mobile moves, the shadows move too. It gives the sculpture the feeling that it is not just still. The sculpture is always moving and the shadows are always moving. So that is something that Alexander Calder really enjoyed making part of his art. He oftentimes made his sculptures so that they would move with the wind or the breeze. Now, I've been to a couple different museums to see some of his sculptures. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about that right now. This Calder mobile is called Holy Red. 
I like how it looks different from every side you can see it on. Ooh, that looks cool.